Greetings Jedi Traders, David here of TradingFibs.com to bring you the technical momentum outlook for week 13. It is March 26, 2017. As always, please seek financial advisement when trading with your money as these videos are for educational purposes only. To support your knowledge in the market, see what's going through my head on any given day or week. Always make sure you have a solid trading plan and always manage your stop when placing a trade. All right, with week 12 in the books and the recap, which can be found here under week 12 recap, market indices on a pullback continue to remain upside in what continues to be an ongoing uptrend holding above each indice's respective 50 and 144 EMA and key moving averages, the 50 and the 200 on higher time frames. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ES chart. The 10 day moving average has lost support on both the YM and the ES, a first indicator of a trend break. The ES, which has found significant resistance on a weekly MML chart as seen here has the probability of a 50% pullback to major support resistance around the 2250 if the 50 MA is unable to hold up, which we'll see here in a little bit on the daily charts. This would put the ES in proximity of its 200-day moving average not seen since November 2016. Go ahead and take a look at some of the key charts there from week 12 as we'll roll into the big picture here for week 13. Kerplunk, that's exactly how the market played itself out on Tuesday as the three indices initiated a hail short to the downside. Interesting enough, it was the NQ making an all-time high prior to just the turnaround. Midweek reprieve. From the sell-off was welcome in comparison to the end of the week chop, as you can see here on the charts. As the indices drew new, near to the respective 50-day moving averages and found support. The headlines out of Washington on Thursday and Friday did not help any as the healthcare vote seemed to play out quite the drama in a minute-by-minute -minute sense of whether it would pass or not. Eventually, the bill was pulled and markets found an opportunity to lift in the last hour of trading on Friday, directly in contrast to what at CNBC thought would happen. Surely good thing I don't use them as my source of trend direction. All right, let's jump into the charts here as we uh, look ahead. Daily gaps, first thing I look at every day. Do we have any daily open gaps, which surely we have enough. You can see here on the ES all the way down to, that's right, 1860.75. Playing it cool, taking out one daily gap after another. If you follow me here on a daily trend basis, right now, 1575 on the ES downside, 248 downside on the YM, and the NQ 3250, 523250, as the blue turquoise line at the top signifying the all-time here on the futures indices and last week's opening price. As you can see, we closed down side from there. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the big charts as we look ahead to next week. Take a look and start out with the NQ. There we go. Taking a look at the daily chart in the upper left-hand corner. Four-hour chart down below, lower left. And on the right here, the Ranko chart, the Flex Ranko 100 tick range chart. Taking a look at the daily NQ, as uh, mentioned before, finding support at the respective 50 day moving averages. It was the only NQ really not finding uh, its traction all the way down to the 50. So we are still holding, but losing that support there at the 10 day moving average here signified by the green line. Looking ahead to the week, we'll watch for price action to see if it can regain its footing above the 10 day moving average here. If unable, we'll look first downside to 53.12.50 or at least the 50 day moving average. That level 5300, 
right here signified by the 50-day moving average would put us in the realm around the midpoint of the major sport resistance here on the four-hour chart, which is 53.1250. So any pullback at this point on the NQ, if we we're not able to hold the 10-day moving average, we'll look back down here to 53.1250 and the 50-day moving average. Anything lower, start to look down to 52.3450 for the week. Traction upside, if able to regain the footing up here above the 10-day moving average, first levels we'll look back up to is 54.6875, which would signify a level here on both the daily and both the range chart here, 54.6875, all the way up to 55.47. All right, taking a look at the YM. Price action here. Holding a 50 period moving average around the major sport resistance here on the MML charts. 250 upside and 20K to the downside. A little bit of consolidation here on both the lower time frames, but the bigger time frames daily holding around here around the major sport resistance gives us probability of both directions. So again, 250 to the upside and 20 to the downside as the four hour chart holds consolidation down at the lows if able to get above the 10 day moving average we would be first looking at 781 and 938 to retest the highs here around march middle of march march 16th as you can see on the range chart we're still holding above the 5144 ema in sync though to the downside pullback here you can see the cloud to the upside 534 so current trend though holding above the 5144 is up we are definitely in a pullback finding support here so if the ym can find its support here off 469 and hold to the upside likewise here 625 push above the 10 period moving average We'll get in that footing back up here, 938, 938 on the four hour chart as well as the range chart. Anything to the downside, start to look for price action here to come down to 20K. And that would be on the daily before there. We surely significant would have levels before that. We would look for the intraday setup on both the 15 minute on a lower time frame, 60 minute and four hour chart as well. All right, taking a look at the ES, both the daily four hour and the range chart. Here we can see price action similar as we saw in the YM, finding its support here off the 50 period moving average. Price action again, we'd like to see it regain its footing above the 10 period moving average. That would put us back up to the highs up here around 2400, 2406. Here we could see consolidation last week across the board after the sell-off on Tuesday, holding here at the low. So looking ahead to the week, similar picture. We're again still in an uptrend on the bigger picture. Price action holding at the 50, holding 51.44 EMA. Though in a pullback here off the major support resistance, which we found some consolidation for several days. All right, so the case to the upside here, Jedi traders, is if price action can hold off the 50 and break back above the 10 period moving average, then I'll start to look to levels around 23.59 all the way up to 23.75, which would put us in sync here on the two charts. As we can see, resistance here, 23.75, 23, <coughs> excuse me, 23.75 on the daily. First, we'd have to break above the 23.59. 23.75 would definitely put us in sync here on the range chart. Anything price action break above with any momentum this week would get us up to the levels here around 24.06 up to 24.21. All right, so there's your big picture on the ES. Let me drop down to the intraday as we take a look at the difference in the setups. There you have your big picture. These are the charts posted every day on the daily trend, 15 minutes prior to the market action opening up, regular trading hours. Here we can see 
on a 60 minute chart first levels to watch here would be 23.59 upside and 2375 back upside again similar levels that we have here on the four hour chart all right so both in sync here the 15 minute for the intraday trader great way to go from one end to another doesn't mean that this if we come off the resistance up here that's it we're just going to completely come down MML levels may reset during the day one to two times. So you need to be ready for both directions. This is where we use the HA bars to keep us in trend. Heiken Ashi bars. As you can see here on the choices of bars when it comes to trading, HA bar signifies a trend. Instead of trying to distinguish what direction it's in, HA bars clearly identify that. Though you have a choice when it comes to trending candles, both on the Sierra Charts platform as well as Thinkorswim platform. These are all trending candles. And any other platform out there might have a variety of different ways of identifying what trend looks like. Here we can see price action again, finding its support off the lows here, off the support. And breaking upside major sports so we'll want to look at price action to lift if we are to regain any footing to lift up to 2351 if unable to pulling back down we'll look for first levels 2336 as we consolidate at the lows on the es at 60 minute as well as the support here on the four hour so if able to break upside 2351 definitely we'll be looking back upside to 2359 downside we'll look for on Monday, Sunday, Globex 23.32. And if unable to hold there, then we'll be a little con um, concerned that the 50 EMA might not hold. And we'll start to look down to at least 50% pullback here, 23.12, and then down to 22.50. All right, so there's your ES outlook. Quickly taking a look at the glance at the crude as crude con continues to consolidate for the most of March in between the 50 and the 46 on a smaller time frame, 60 minute chart, a little bit smaller. We got the 48 to 47. This is where we've been for most of week 12 on the crude as it as it lost its resistance here and came all the way down to the MML lows here at the support. Here we see the four hour chart as well. Just a different setting here. 49.22 upside. Again, there was the uh, beginning of uh, week 12 setup from the highs down to the lows here. All right, so looking at crude, obviously we'd like to see the crude hold support here around that 46.88 on the bigger time frame, smaller time frame holding here at 47. If crude is able to hold here, We'll watch for the 200 SMA, that's at 49.28. That would put us up here at the level resistance up here, but we first have to break above 48.44. Anything to the downside, we'll look back again to the lows of last week down here to 47.07, and then jump over to our daily gaps on the crude to see any significant levels. Yep, 46.51 down to 45.63. All right, so there's your crude levels for next week. Again, both directions. If able to break back above 50, eventually uh, maybe close out the open gap up above the 55. But for now, we remain in the downtrend here. It's price action holding at the lows. You'll also want to watch that on an intraday basis. Taking a look at the daily four hour on two different time frames and the 60 minute here. Gold, again, in the reversal of crude here. Consolidation at the tops, unable to break upside on all three time frames, sitting in between the 50 and the 200. So the case for gold to the downside, pretty clear here. 50 period moving average down at 1227. If able to uh, hold, if it, unable to hold here and breaks back downside, again, uh, take a look at 1227. Before we get there, we'll be in the range here of the support downside on the gold, downside on the 60 minute chart down here at 1234, also same numbers with consolidation here on the top four hour. Anything significant to the drop to the downside, if we were to lose 1234, we'll start, we'll start to look at 1218, which definitely would start to be 
around uh, lower than the 50 period moving average down towards uh, as we drive down to the lows of mid-March. All right, so there's your gold big picture rolling into week 13. VIX levels continue to remain in the high 12s with the healthcare out of the way for now and not for the better. The three biggies which seem to loom over the market from an economic reform include taxes, infrastructure, and trade. This is where the market thought it would see change unless something significant comes out of these headlines. Price action may continue to struggle at these highs. Key events in the market this week. include on our economic calendar federal reserve speakers which surely can move the market on any given day end of the month gdp here on thursday and brexit as well this week our highlights of the week which i will be watching closely for volatility don't rule out washington politics and worldly imbalance to set the market in motion, which by any other given year may not be as newsworthy, but continue to play a bigger role in 2017. So, what's the bottom line for week 13? Watch price action around the daily 50 period moving average on market indices. If unable to hold, price action may seek support around the 50% pullback and open gaps. Upside action, look for price to regain the 10-day moving average, and to push above. Technical probability remains in an uptrend on the bigger picture. Signs of market weakness started to show in week 11 and followed through in week 12. Observe the intraday as we looked at on the 60 and the 15-minute charts for any alert of the change in trend or continued movement upside. I will continue to notify through social media and my daily outlook posted 15 minutes prior to the U.S. Open of any updates throughout the week. Speaking of social media, go ahead and give a shout out to the three key followers I enjoy to read on both an intraday and a weekly macro or micro view. Mr. Ken Polkari here with his morning newsletter. Go ahead and check it out. Subscribe. I go ahead and retweet that out each morning. But go ahead and get your own personal inbox. Take a look at Jason Kelly, the Kelly Letter, which you can also check out his YouTube channel, The 3% Signal. Good macro view of the market each week delivered to your inbox early Sunday morning. As well as the Shadow Trader, check out his market profile, which I follow as well. And you can go ahead and learn a little bit from both his webinars, indicators, or just an overall consensus when it comes to um, understanding market uh, analysis from the profile perspective. All right, guys, that concludes an insight into the technical momentum for week 13. Feel free to stop by tradingfibs.com or any of my social media outlets to obtain more information. My mantra of one simple strategy, any market, any chart, any time frame will keep you disciplined. You can find me every day on Twitter at Trading Fibs. And as always, I leave the crystal ball to the experts. I only watch what's in front of me and on my chart. Speaking of charts, what is it we are looking for? We can appreciate the uh, can appreciate the bigger picture, but when it comes to the charts, seeing the candles in trend underneath the 5144 cloud gives us an opportunity to for highest probability of momentum to remain in a setup like so and giving yourself a trade management program that hopefully gets you a contract off and gives you the opportunity for a runner. After that is in place, it's all up to the market. It, no control. And that's what I say. Leave your bias at the door when trading. Markets can move in either direction. So as long as your trade management gets at least a contract off or your move to break even, you have the probability of remaining in the trend just based on the trend candle. So charts that you saw today, that's the big picture. Intraday, same setup, just on a smaller time frame. For those of you that are interested in joining our community of like-minded traders seeking those highest probability setups, feel free to email me, david at tradingfibs.com. You may join us any Thursday or Friday to view the live chart setups as they happen in the trading day. Hey guys, have yourselves a blue zone 
week, wherever you may be. Good day, good night, and good trading to you.